disjoint sets and a way to do union and find on them very easily. So um, this is one of those algorithms, a data structure and algorithm uh, that's just cute, uh, rather ingenious, and works really well. So, okay, so here's the idea. We're gonna have a bunch of disjoint sets, a bunch of items that are uh, each in different groups. Um, think of a bunch of people and the people are in different clans and you're only in one clan. Okay, you can't be simultaneously in two clans, disjoint sets, okay? And we'll go ahead and I, I usually think of this as partitioning a bunch of items. Uh, so every item has to be in at least one set. I guess you can have just a singleton set of a single item for a clan of one person rather than saying they're not in any clan, they're in a very small clan. <coughs> okay, so we have disjoint sets. Um, there are two operations we want to support, uh, find and union. Find, uh, here's a person, which clan are they in? And hey, I have two different clans and I want to join them, okay? Maybe there's a marriage or something like that. I don't want to irrevocably merge them. Um, so, um, how can we do that? Well, one obvious way is, hey, for every object, for every person, I'll have an extra field for which uh, clan they're in, for which set they are a member of, since they're only a member of exactly one set. Um, you could do that. Uh, rather than have a number, have the sets just be numbered or something like that, uh, we can say, hey, you know, here's how I'll represent a set. Uh, I'll, for each clan, I'll choose one person as the uh, distinguished member, okay? And when you talk about a set, we'll just talk, refer to it by their distinguished member. Member. So he's like, hey, I'm in Amy's clan, okay? Or I'm in Bob's clan. Um, and you ask anybody in Bob's clan, whose clan are you in? They'll all answer Bob. So, um, and now here's the thing that we're gonna, the hitch we wanna run into. Uh, you might say naively, hey, for every object, I'm just gonna keep, you know, which clan they're in. Uh, but here's a, when I merge Amy's clan and Bob's clan, I don't want to go through everybody in Bob's clan and update their field saying, hey, now we're in Amy's clan. That could be a lot of work if Bob's clan is large. So, so there's gonna be a clever way of handling this. Um, and the first idea is, hey, when we go ahead and merge Bob and Amy's clan, we're only gonna go ahead and say, hey, Bob is now in Amy's clan. And when we look up somebody's clan, we might look up somebody's clan and say, hey, you look at that object and they say, hey, I'm, I'm in Bob's clan. But we're gonna to go to Bob and say, hey, Bob, which clan are you in? Oh, I'm in Amy's clan. If Amy later merges with somebody else, we'll ask, hey, Amy, whose clan are you in? And uh, you can sort of see that we're gonna get a tree structure here. Um, and I have a URL here that I'll put in the YouTube notes, uh, visualgo.net slash en slash UFDS, union find, dis, uh, union find for disjoint sets. Um, okay, and so you can might see that, yeah, we have a, a several, four different uh, sets here. And uh, if you ask whose set are, is eight in, they'll say eight. Whose set are you in three? They'll say, oh, I'm in set one. Okay, who set are you in six? I'm in set four. So rather than people, we have numbers here. Um, okay, and you can see that, yeah, if we want to merge two clans, you know, if we might merge four onto uh, eight, eight and four, then eight might be under four and everything would work well. Uh, I'll have to be careful. I wouldn't want to merge four under eight. Uh, if I did, I'd get a deeper tree. I, I like merging eight and four better than four with eight. If I think about who would be under whom, we'll come back to that. Um, what if I go ahead and merge uh, uh, persons uh, three and four? Again, I wouldn't want to put four underneath the three. I could, but here's another clever idea. When I go ahead and merge, if I'm gonna merge three and four, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and we're then gonna end up merging one and four, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do a union of set uh, three and four, let's go with that. And I don't, don't need to look at the code. Um, what we're gonna do is say, hey, you wanna merge three and four? Hey, find who set three is in. And we're gonna go and find the root one. And then go ahead and find who set four is in. Oh, we know that, yeah. Four. Okay, now go ahead and merge one and four, okay? So we do that. Uh, make a new tree out of it, 
and we happen to get this this particular um, arrangement. Okay, that's pretty good. We've made our tree deeper, uh, but notice that uh, uh, I'm still worried about I I'm not worried about trees. Trees have if they branch, they have good height. Uh, we get a logarithmic performance. I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to end up doing better. Um, I am worried about trees that end up with a long, dangly string, okay? So what if I merge, um, you know, 8 onto 9, we get a little tree, and then I merge something, uh, I, or I've merged two trees of height, they have height 5. I don't want to get, you know, I could get a tree of height 10, I guess that'd be okay. I don't want to get a long, stringy tree, though. Long, stringy trees are no good. They lose that tree property if there's not enough branching. So, okay, uh, so how can I avoid long stringy trees? There's a couple of ways. One of them is, we've already seen, always merge with the roots of the two trees, okay? So I'm gonna merge, uh, you know, uh, let's go to a different example here. And I'm gonna merge uh, three and, uh, you know, 10 and 11 here in this example. Uh, great, we're really going to merge three and five, and that will help keep the trees shallow. But here's the other really uh, cool idea. This is called path compression. And we can do this actually not just when we're unioning, but anytime we ask. Let's say if we ask, hey, number, I'll ask for number 10. Hey, 10, whose set are you in? Let's do find set of 10. We'll go there. And it's pretty clear, you just uh, walk up from here to here. Um, but here's the interesting thing. As we walk up and find this, you know, what we can actually do is and say, hey, now that we've found that 10 is up in set number three, let's go ahead and move 10 so it refers directly to three, okay? So when you find that 10 is inside three, move 10 so its parent is no longer four, its parent is directly three, and I've now flattened the tree. If I had a long path, I could go ahead and move that bottom node to the top. In fact, every intermediate node that I had to visit anyway to get to the root, I can move them all uh, so they point directly up to the root. And if you look at the code for uh, find set, uh, by the way, it's not shown here. Um, I talked about, hey, we always, to when you're asking uh, whose clan are you in, you always go to the clan leader and then their leader and then their leader. You walk up to the root of the tree. Um, We'll go ahead and say that the root is their own leader, okay? Just as a way, so everybody does have a parent, uh, just times the root is, the parent is yourself, and we'll, we can look for that in the code. Uh, ends up being a nice way of doing that rather than a separate sentinel value. Uh, so here's the code. If uh, we're looking for uh, the member whose member, hey, I, whose set are you in, uh, we'll look at parent of I, okay? If it's equal to I, we're at the root. Return that member. Otherwise, return... Well, here's what we're really returning. This is weird C syntax, but uh, we're returning find set of the parent of I. Hey, I'm in whose ever set my parent belongs to, and the root is, gives the answer. So, um, but here's the path compression. After you find the set of the parent of I, and that's a recursive call, so we recur all the way up to the top, naturally. Um, hey, but at the end of that recursive call, go ahead and have the parent of that node refer directly to the root. And because this is in a recursive call, this assignment to the uh, assigning to the parent is happening for the leaf and its parent and its parent grandparent and so on all the way up to the top. And that's why if we had a long chain and we do a find on the, the leaf of the long chain, we're going to collapse that entire chain. From wherever we started looking all the way to the root, we're going to collapse them up all so they link directly to the root. That's a pretty cool idea. That's called path compression. Okay, um, the other idea that's going to keep these uh, trees nice and efficient is when we do a union, not only do we union the roots, but which root do we union? I said before that uh, back over here, if I'm going to merge, you know, eight and uh, three, I wouldn't want to put, that's really going to merge eight and four. Hey, I can sort of see that, don't put four underneath the eight, Put the eight underneath the four. That's going to keep things more balanced. It's going to keep the tree from getting longer. So another simple idea, whenever you merge two trees, merge the one with the, well, I would say the smaller height, okay? Um, 
what they're actually using here, and you have the, this little term R, uh, rank. We're going to merge the one with a smaller rank. Rank is essentially height, except that, you know, sometimes the height can get shorter when you do that path compression we just talked about. And we're not going to bother keeping track of the real height of a tree. Uh, that would be kind of a pain. Um, so we'll take a rank. A rank is the initial height when that tree got created. Uh, but then that rank will never get smaller. But we're going to do this in a way that ranks never get that big. So, okay. So here's what we do. We go ahead and let's do a, let me lock that down to here, uh, do a union of zero and uh, seven, sure. And so now, hey, find which set zero is in and we go and find that, uh, great. Um, and notice that that's going to do some path compression there. Okay, uh, union zero and seven really became union of three and seven, um, which me really means three and five. Okay, so when you do that union, uh, go ahead and in this case they're both rank two by the time we do the union. Okay, and we get that. Um, so choose either one, make that the child. Okay, great. Um, and now if we later do a union, let's do a one more union, and I just want to emphasize that show that the algorithm here is demonstrated, it's going to say, hey, take the one with the smaller rank and put it lower. Keep the one with the bigger rank, make that, keep that the root. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say four and nine. Go ahead and pause the video, think about what the picture is going to look like after we do a union of four and nine. Remember, we're going to do some path, we're going to find the root of four and do path compression as we're doing that. Okay, so stepping through this particular one, let's uh, do, 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 do. Take that code back. I'm not gonna worry about the code. You can look up the code and work through it. Um, okay, so find four as parent. Great, that path compression happened. So four gets pulled up. The others don't get pulled up. Three was already yeah, reassigning we said three's parent becomes the root, but three's parent was already the root, so it doesn't look different. Um, same with nine, doesn't look different after the path, path compression. Merge five and six. Make sure now, again, union by rank, or go ahead and put the keep the bigger rank, the rank three where it is, and put the rank one underneath. That red number again is the rank. So, okay. So that is how to do union and find and keep your trees short, uh, keeps your trees shallow. How shallow? Well, we know the trees in general, if they're balanced or about log in, it turns out this ends up doing better than that. Trees get temporary, temporarily longer maybe, um, but as soon as you do a find, as soon as you try to use something deep, it's going to do, and you can show it's amortized to always be well, um, and even with the union by rank, uh, it's going to do really great. These aren't going to get, first of all, with such a big fan out, notice how this fan out gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and that's going to keep the trees very shallow. Um, it turns out the height of the tree uh, work has shown if you use the, these different heuristics um, of, of how to, which tree to make the parent of what, um, the height of the tree is going to be bounded by the, or the rank is going to be bounded by the Ackerman function the inverse Ackerman function, which grows very slowly. Uh, if you go look it up on Wikipedia, it's amazingly slowly, because the inverse of an Ackerman function grows amazingly quick, quickly. Um, in particular, it's sort of like a stacked exponential. Uh, Ackerman of five, think of being you know two to the two to the two to the two five times, except it's actually much, much more than that. Um, but the upshot is, hey, um, for any conceivable input, the inverse Ackerman function is less than five. So you can sort of say, hey, these trees with union find are for all, not even for, even for impractical purposes, are bounded by five. You could take the number of particles in the universe, about 10 to the 80, write a bit on each one, one or zero. That's a lot of different combinations. That's two to the 10 to the 80 possible numbers. If you had that many items, your height would still never be more than five. Wow, okay. So that's just kind of crazy. Um, I think that's all I have to say about Union find, do I have anything else? Oh, uses. Why might, what are places you might want to use this? Um, when you have disjoint sets, uh, 
And these come up in a variety of diff different places. So in graph, keeping track of the various components. So think of a uh, Facebook, okay, where uh, initially everybody's on Facebook, but nobody's friended to anybody else. They're all in their own disjoint set. And then two people become friends and they go into the same clan. Well, you know, friending works both ways in Facebook, right? Uh, and we're gonna say, hey, I wanna talk about clans as far as I'm a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. We're therefore in the same clan, okay? And so you can go ahead and keep track of all the friending and find out, hey, is everybody in the same clan? That's good. Is everybody in, on Facebook connected to everybody else? Probably, um, but maybe not. Maybe there really are two huge echo chambers that there is nobody in here who's related to a friend in here through any number of steps, any known number of friend or friend of friends. Who knows? This algorithm could go ahead and compute that reasonably efficiently, so. Okay, uh, another example that I like, that I was uh, introduced to, is if you wanna create a maze. Um, just a rectangular base. I'm going to start with some graph paper, and here's what I'll do. I'm going to go put, fill in all the ed all the walls of this maze. So I have a whole bunch of square cells, and you can't really get it from anywhere to anywhere else. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and um, pick any wall in my maze, and I'm going to say, hey, uh, which component, which clan are you in on one side of the wall and the other side of the wall, which component are you in? If they're in the same component, that's gonna mean there's a path from one to the other. And I'm like, oh, okay, leave the wall there. Taking out the wall doesn't, will make my maze too easy. Uh, I'll leave the wall in there, but still have a path from here to here. Uh, but if I can't get from here to here, I'm gonna remove that wall and I'm gonna join two sections. So my, I can grow a maze by randomly picking a wall. Start with, a, a, again, start with a grid. Uh, put in every single square wall, you have a whole bunch of square cells, choose a random wall, can you get from one side to the other? If not, remove that wall. You're going to grow a bunch of little sections of mazes that are all connected. And these are going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, eventually you'll go and you can keep doing this so there's exactly one component. That is, you can get from anywhere in the maze to anywhere else. Okay, it's we kind of like those mazes that are, that are fair. You can't have an impossible task, but I've not removed any walls that I didn't need to remove. So that's kind of a fun example. Okay, so the by the way, the inverse Ackerman function is often written alpha of n, uh, and it is less than log star, is less than that inverse of the repeated exponentiation. So, um, okay, anything else? These are, this is a cool data structure that has these two awesome uh, functions for it, union and find with a, amazing efficiency. Um, it's not a general purpose set abstract data type, so we don't have uh, set difference or iterate over all members of a set. You can probably add some of those. You can think about how to add iterating over all members of a set. That could still be done, I think. Um, but in general, we use this when you only want to use union and find operations, and those do come up in real life in graph search finding connected components, so. Okay, thanks. Oh, if you're interested in the math, again, go to your algorithm textbook to show that bound about the inverse Ackerman function, or at least the inverse uh, exponentiated or st stacked log, the log star. Um, and you can actually see the math behind that. We can talk about that in class, but I'm not gonna do it in this video. Though.